This is Facebook live or YouTube live? So we are YouTube live also. Yeah. So welcome, uh, Dr. Senia, Professor Senia from Russia. Can I see you? Long time since I've seen you, my my dear. Uh, she's uh, one of my students, and uh, I'm so proud of her. Professor Senia, can you uh, show me your face? Unmute yourself. Hello. Senia, can you hear me? No, she's unmuted, but uh, she's maybe not able to hear. Okay, fine. So I'll be meeting uh, Dr. Senia from Russia in Tashkent on uh, February, uh, I think six, seven, eight or something like that. Yeah, so we're going to do a series of uh, very, very, very difficult cases, um, both lateral skull base and anterior skull base in Tashkan with my friend, Dr. Umrao. And uh, I think Senia will be joining from Russia. And I'm also happy to inform that uh, we'll be starting our center in Dubai very shortly. So there will be uh, Royal Pearl Dubai very shortly now. So this year is a year of expansion. Can we start the case? Huh? Shall I wash up? No? Okay, now to brief about the case. Now, what do we do for epistaxis? So in a, in a case of epistaxis, what you usually do is we pack the nose. So my formula is don't pack the nose. Packing is a very, very, very harmful procedure. Why is packing a harmful procedure? Because when you anteriorly pack the nose, you're actually causing more and more abrasions. And you will actually lose the real golden opportunity of seeing where this epistaxis is coming from. So uh, don't pack the nose if you can take the patient to the theater. And the best uh, time for examining a patient with epistaxis is during an episode of epistaxis. So apart from the little seria bleed, in children, apart from all that, we are going to discuss in middle age where there is no tumor, there is no JNA or anything like that. How do you deal with epistaxis? So I'm going to tell certain things. And uh, in fact, Professor Aldo Stam, I don't know if you know him, he's one of the pioneers of skull base from Brazil. And I had an opportunity to, uh, you know, um, meet him be a co-faculty and also I operated in Brazil and uh, that is a cadaver dissection and uh, uh, he keeps on insisting on some very nice points in epistaxis and I picked up a lot of points from Professor Aldo Stam and uh, I'm going to share it with you now. So let us see what uh, we are going to do for this case. I'm going to wash up and I'm going to start the case. Get ready to see some really good action and after this we have a case of jna i'll be operating a jna here uh, that'll be the next case okay now i go wash up and uh, come back
ரெக்கார்ட் பண்ணிட்டு தூக்கிட்டு so here we are and i am now going to show you what we do for apis taxes so this is a 25 year old male who presents to us with recurrent apis taxes in the uh, on the right side so we treated him for many days uh, conservatively give tablet stripped of it the tassel and all the stuff also uh, check this blood bleeding parameters hypertensive or not and uh, every time he says he also showed me a video where it is actually pouring down it was pouring down so but whenever he came to me he didn't have epis taxes so what do you do in such instances so we'll have to do a diagnostic nasal endoscopy which i'm going to do right now so see here uh, was he packed uh, elsewhere he was packed elsewhere see always don't pack a case of epistaxis why i told even now pre operatively don't pack see here i'm going to show this is this is because of the packing they have they have caused a little trauma here he was packed elsewhere and sent here and now i'm going to show you what is the cause for his epistaxis see whenever you see a case of epistaxis suction you always go towards the nasopharynx this is formula number 1 so when you are seeing the uh, patient in your opd out patient take an endoscope put the endoscope in the nasopharynx don't suck always put it in the nasopharynx and what will happen if you come if they come during an episode of epistaxis you can actually see where the epistaxis is coming from but when he comes uh when there is no epistaxis what will happen is the blood is cleared by mucociliary beat please understand not by give me a ball probe it is cleared by mucociliary beat so you will find a streak of blood you find a streak of blood somewhere here in the nasopharynx here you will find it in the nasopharynx and when you trace that streak of blood just see now is there any streak of blood yeah here there is a streak of blood you can see see here there is a streak of blood 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 here so it will lead you on to the place where the epistaxis is coming from you understand so that means it is coming from definitely the middle meatus from here okay so that is the clear cut please so now where do you look for bleeding sites so professor aldo stam keeps telling look at this site look at this site this site is very very notorious see here middle turbinate medial to the middle turbinate give me a elevator so just above the anterior edge of the middle turbinate see here here is a very very usual site of epistaxis that is where the septal branch of the anterior ethmoidal artery comes here and that's a very very common site for epistaxis and this is the, the, that is one site second site of course is from the sphenopalatine artery region you take a ct scan you see that there is no uh you know tumor then you can go in for what is called the sphenopalatine artery ligation so i'm going to suck that blood now i know it's from the sphenopalatine artery region so how do you do a sphenopalatine artery ligation you also inspect the inferior meatus for any telangiectatic small telangiectatic nodules so we always examine the inferior meatus as well always so look whether there is any telangiectatic nodules so this i have seen in many many cases some small telangiectatic nodules causing epistaxis so it is not there so uh, i have examined all the areas and this is the trauma produced due to the packing don't don't bother about that now what i will do is i'll do the sphenopalatine artery ligation 
So before that, I want to examine the sphenoid model recess also to look for the septal branch of the sphenopalatine artery. See that the septal branch of the sphenopalatine artery region there looks normal. So I'm very sure now that if I ligate this SPA, this patient is not going to have bleeding. Now give me the coblation. So how do I do that? It's very, 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 very simple. It's going to take around five minutes. You will see in five minutes, you can, you can do this under local anesthesia also. But uh, the patient preferred general anesthesia, so I'm doing this. So you take the coblation, you see here, fill the posterior end of the inferior turbinate, superior border. This is the horizontal part of the middle turbinate. This is blue or uh, yellow? Blue. So just mark your, see that's the horizontal part. Just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you mark this incision. So you have a vertical uh, horizontal component. This is the horizontal component of the incision. See, that is the uh, the artery going towards the inferior turbinate. Okay. So inferior turbinate branch of the sphenopalatine artery. You So the sphenopalatine artery gives off many branches. It gives off a branch to the middle turbinate. It gives off a branch to the unsonate process. It gives off a branch to the septum. Now, this is the inferior turbinate branch here. Now, after doing that, see, your incision should be just superior to the inferior turbinate and just behind the bulla. See here, like this. Now, I'm going to make that yellow incision with the uh, uh, cobbler. You have to see the palatine bone. This is a palatine. Can you see the palatine bone here? Tanni, tanni. Okay, that's the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. You understand? And then you go up. You go up like this. Finished. Over. That's all. I have made the incision. And after that, give me an elevator. Once I elevate, you will see the sphenopalatine artery. First, you identify the crista. See that. Can you see the crista here? All of you? Is it clear or not? See. Clearly seen. That's the sphenopalatine artery. Now, you take the cobblator. And then use the blue. That is the coag mode blue, Amade. The blue, the blue, the blue. So you are going to actually see my coblation is directed towards the foramen and I use the blue. Please understand. The coag mode towards the foramen. And away from the foramen, you press it and then use the yellow. Don't use the yellow towards the Foramen because it will retract inside and it will cause bleeding. Get my point or not? See, I have cut it off now. Can you see? Now use the blue again. That's a crista. So it is formed by the orbital process of the palatine bone. So the sphenopalatine foramen is formed by the orbital process and the sphenoidal, this is the sphenoidal process. Sphenoidal process, orbital process. Can you see that clearly? So that's it, finished. See, that's the lumen of the sphenopalatine artery. And if you do that, most of the cases, you will not have epistaxis again at all. That's it. See how simple it is, at the same time, very effective. But there is only one caveat. Please understand that you might have more than one artery. And the books have described till 13 vessels. 13 uh, foraminae. So you have to go till the anterior phase of the sphenoid sinus. You have to go till the, see, that's the uh, pterygosphenoid synchondrosis. That's what we see in the adat flap. You understand? So I go right till the level of the anterior end of the sphenoid sinus. Now you see I have completely Oh, irrigate, irrigate, irrigate. Yeah, see, that's all. I have done that completely. It took around three, four minutes. But this is like, you know, patient had at least 15, 20 episodes.
so that's how we do the sinopart in artery ligation and uh, it's almost done now i'm going to take an elevator and i'm just going to now munichana case over see that i've gone till the level of the anterior end of the sphenoid sinus did you see that uh, so 100% i have not left behind any of the branches of the blue sphenoparotid artery that's the fontanel fontanel of the sphenoid sinus okay so that's it finished so you don't pack the nose the problem is again you should not pack the nose if you pack the nose the very idea of the surgery is gone so don't pack the nose you just leave it like that he will not bleed that's all we have done several 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 cases like this and uh, we've had very good results and uh, that's the end of the surgery i just wanted to show you that for a, such a small surgery don't make the patient get admitted uh, and then uh, put the patient on uh, put the patient on uh, injection vitamin k and things like that and then uh, don't uh, you know pack anterior nasal pack posterior nasal pack all that don't do it's uh, just waste of uh, time and it's wrong also to my uh, uh, knowledge it's wrong because we have we have seen many many cases being packed all over big big packs and then they they send the patient that's wrong actually so that's the end of the surgery <clears throat> you can actually now see the next surgery which is a jna and uh, i will be putting the scan and you will read about the scan and uh, we will so dr senior are you there okay i think i'll uh, say goodbye to all of you i'll come back with the next zoom link again another zoom link for the jna bye bye see you all